Hi everyone, welcome to Doing Math with Allison. Today we're going to be talking about limits and their definition. So we're going to look at some pictures, see what it looks like graphically, and go through the notation. So let's go ahead and dive into it. We have the definition written here in words, and we also can see the notation of it. So we have the limit, which we represent with L-I-M. I write it with a cursive L, you don't have to do that. Um, we have the limit of f of x, which f of x is our function, whatever we're working with, as x, our domain or our input, approaches some value of a, right? And we write that with x arrow a. So what this equals is l. l is not always a number. l could be something like it does not exist. It could be infinity, negative infinity. It could be an actual number. We're going to go through some examples of that, and we're going to see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and look at this graphically. I have an example right here. We have f of x, our function is equal to sine of x. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the limit as x approaches zero of f of x. Let me zoom in right here on our beautiful picture that we have. So we are looking as x approaches zero. Let's look at our domain. We have our x axis right here, right? So as x approaches 0, we're going to look from both sides. So if I start out at 1 and negative 1, I can see I have values down here. This looks like it's a little less than negative 1. And I have a value right here. Because remember, we're looking at x as it approaches 0, but that's not interesting. I already know what x is doing. It's approaching 0. What's really interesting is that I'm looking at my function. I'm looking at what my function value is approaching as x approaches 0. So I have a value that looks like a little less than one, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get closer and closer, and we're gonna go ahead and see, really, what is our function doing as our x value approaches zero? And it looks like, right, if we look at this right at the center, we're also approaching a value of zero. So let me zoom out again a little here. We have the limit as x approaches zero of f of x. This can also be written as the limit as x approaches zero of our actual function. So we're gonna go ahead and take sine of x. By just looking at the table, we can see that our function sine of x at zero is going to be zero. And so that's our limit. Let's go ahead and look at this as a table method. This is also called table method. Um, we have a nice basic function for us. f of x is equal to x plus two. We can evaluate limits by using a table sometimes. This is another great method. So we, if I zoom out a little bit right here, we have the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. And here I already skipped to the next step. I plugged in our function, which is x plus 2, written right here. And let's go ahead and take x values that are getting really, really close to 2. So I'm going to go ahead and start building up first, up to 2. So I'm going to start with 1. I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my function so I get 1 plus 2, which is equal to 3, right? I'm going to plug in another, another number, just kind of getting closer to 2. 1.5 plus 2 is equal to 3.5. I can do math. Yeah, algebra. I'm going to plug in another number super close, 1.9. 1 1.9 9 plus 2 is equal to 3.9. Another number, I'm not going to go to 2 exactly, we're just going to get really, really close to 2. So let's do 1.99. Plug it into my function, 1.99 plus 2 is equal to 3.99. Just using our brains to make an estimated guess, I'm going to assume if I take 2, it's going to equal 4. And I'm going to go ahead and now approach 2 from the opposite direction. So now I'm going to start above 2 and go down to it. So let's go ahead and start at 3. I get 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. Going to go down a little bit, get closer, 2.5. So I'm going to plug that in, 2.5 plus 2 is equal to 4.5. Get another step closer, 2.1. 2.1 plus 2 is equal to 4.1. 2.01, now we're getting real close to 2. 2.01 plus 2 is equal to 4.01. So now let's go ahead and look at this value from both sides. If I'm approaching from the left side to 2, I get 3.99 as I get really close. And that number is only going to get closer and closer to 4. From the opposite end, I get to 4.01. 4.01 .01 plus 2 
I'm going to use this table method to made, make an educated guess that the limit as x approaches 2 is going to be 4. This is called the table method. It is a totally valid method. It is great to use. Um, if you like to use it graphically though, like we did in the example before, it's just whatever your brain prefers. Some people like to see it visually, some people like to see it numerically, right? There's another method here, but we have to be really careful with this method. Um, algebraic method, we have our function f of x is equal to e to the 2x. And so we're going to take the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x. I'm going to go ahead and plug in what f of x is since we know it. The limit as x approaches negative 3 of e to the 2x. Sometimes when we have a continuous function, that means when we're drawing out our function on the graph, we never lift our pencil up. So it's completely continuous. We can just plug that value straight in. So let's go ahead and take f of negative 3. I have my input is going to be negative 3. Let's see what our output is. I have e times 2 to the negative 3. I'm going to multiply that in. I get e to the negative 6. For those who do not like negative exponents, I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over e to the 6. We have to be so careful with this method because it doesn't always work out nicely. Sometimes the algebraic method, when you plug in the value, I have f of negative 3 here, it is not going to be the same as taking the limit. So let's go ahead and see some examples of that. Right here, we have what looks like a piecewise function. We have it given to us in graph form, and we can see that we have a hole right here, right? And I have something where the function is continuous, continuous, and then boom, I jump up. So at, I'm going to write it over here, f of 2, this is going to be equal to 5. Because this is where the value actually exists. So I'm going to write that over here. We have f of 2 is equal to 5. But if we take the limit as x approaches 2, I'm going to look at a different value right here. If I approach 2 from the left side as I'm getting closer and closer, right? We're approaching 2, getting real close, and this is what I mean when I say x is approaching 2. We look at, jump up to our function, look at that. It looks like we're approaching 3. Let's go ahead and look at it from the other side. If I'm approaching 2 from the opposite end, x is approaching 2, we're going to see what our function does. It looks like we are also approaching 3. So even though the value jumps up, our limit is different. Our limit as x approaches 2 is going to be 3. Because we're not going to the actual value, we're getting super, super close to the value. And we're seeing what happens on either end of it. On either end, we're getting really, really close to 3. At the actual value, we jump up to 5. So this is where our function and our limit can be different. Let's look at another example of this. I have another piecewise function. It's very, very similar to the last one, except now we have a hole at four. And this is f of four. However, this hole is not filled in anywhere else. So again, if we look at our limit, as x approaches four, we're getting really close to four on each side. We look at what our function does. f looks like it's approaching right above four, right? We're getting really close to it. Let's go ahead and call it like 4.3, educated guess. And so I'm going to plug that in right here. It looks like it's 4.3. All we're given is a graph, so we can just use our best educated guess. However, our actual function is not defined. So what we write is does not exist. The shorthand for this is just DNE because mathematicians are lazy. We like to do less work, so let's just go ahead and write DNE. This is an example of where our limit exists, but our function does not exist. Again, the limit is getting super, super close to x equals 4 and what the function does. So we're approaching it from both sides, and we're seeing what number it is on either end. And we can see it's about 4.3. But when we go to the actual number, the actual x equals 4, we do not have a value to plug in there. And so we write does not exist. So now I have a couple examples that we can go through. First, I have f of x equals x cubed plus 2. Let's go ahead and look at f of 2, what the actual function is, but also the limit as x approaches from both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and just do f of 2 first. I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my function. So I have 2 cubed plus 2. 2 cubed is equal to 8. 2 times 2 times 2. We get 8 plus 2. 
which is equal to 10. I provided a graph here. I personally like to see visually, so it's really helpful to see the graph of it. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in um, 2 comma 10. And that's going to be my point, right? Let's go ahead and plug in some other points so we can see what it's doing on either side. I'm going to go ahead and plug in 1 into our equation. I'm going to write it right up here. We have f of 1 is equal to 1 cubed plus 2. 1 cubed is just 1, and so we get 3. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in right here. I'm also going to plug in on the other side of it. It might be really big. f of 3, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug in 3. We get 3 cubed plus 2. 3 cubed is 3 times 3, which is 9. Times another 3, we get 27. And I get a large value of 29. So I know it's going to be like way up there. That's not an accurate picture. But I'm going to go ahead and try to fill it in a little bit. So I get something like this. Mathematicians are not artistes. We try our best. So let's go ahead and look at what our function is doing on either side. By drawing it out, I know this is a continuous function because we have x cubed plus 2. We never lift our pencil anywhere. And so now I can just look at what this looks like visually. Let me go ahead and erase some of our math that we did right here so I can fill it in. We know that if I approach from both sides as we're getting really, really close to 2, I'm also going to be approaching 10. Right? As our x value approaches 2, our y value, our f of x, our output is approaching 10. So this is an example of where our limit and our function are the same. They align together. Now, this might be a bit different. We have a piecewise function. Our function is broken up into pieces, which is why it's called a piecewise. And we have f of x is equal to 3x plus 2 when x is not 1 and 4 when x is equal to 1. So I'm going to go ahead and just immediately fill in part b right here. I know f of 1 is going to be 4 because that is when x is equal to 1. So I can draw that in on my graph. I have a 1 right here. I'm going to go all the way up to 4, fill that in. Now let's go ahead and draw in the rest of our function, 3x plus 2 when x is not equal to 1, so everywhere else. I'm going to go ahead and plug in 0. I'll write that down right over here. f of 0 is equal to 3 times 0 plus 2, which is just equal to 2, right? 0 plus 2 is 2. I'm going to plug that in. I get right here. I'm going to go ahead and plug in oop, f of 2. I get 3 times 2 plus 2 is equal to 6 plus 2, which is equal to 8. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to 2 and go up 8. So remember, our function is going to have a hole at 1. So I cannot continue a perfectly straight line. I'm going to try to fill this in as best as I can. Again, mathematicians are not artists. Yeah. So I can see, however, my limit is going to be a little different because I'm going to look as the limit as x approaches 1. I'm going to look on either side what our function does. It looks like we're getting really close to the value of 5. How did I know that, you might ask? And that's because if I were to plug it into the top part of the function, f of 1 illegally, because it's not supposed to be there, is equal to 5. And so I'm going to have a hole right there because then I jump down to 4. So this is an example of a piecewise function where our um, limit and our function are different. Let's go ahead and look at one more. We have another piecewise function. We have x when x is less than or equal to 0, and we have x plus 1 when x is greater than 0. So I know f of 0 is going to be included in this top part because this is when it can equal 0, right? So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. I get just 0. So if I plug it in here, I have a 0, 0 right here. And now I'm going to draw my function on the left side. When x is less than 0, we have um, our function is just x. So if I plug in some values, I get negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, and I extend out that way. Now I have x plus 1 and x is strictly greater than 0. So if I were to plug in 0 here, I'd go up to the value of 1. But remember, we can't include that value because x is strictly greater than 0. So now what I'm going to do is plug in values after. So I'm going to plug in 1. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. 
plug in 2, 2 plus 1 is equal to 3, and it continues on in that manner. This right here is called a jump discontinuity. So when we're looking at our limit, we have a bit of an issue. We are looking when x approaches 0. So I'm going to approach 0 from both sides and look what my function does. The issue is on the bottom, it looks like I'm getting really, really close to 0. But at the top, I'm getting really, really close to 1. So is it going to be 0 or is it going to be 1? So when we have a jump discontinuity, when we have to jump with our pencil from the paper because we can't attach them nicely, then we write does not exist. Because we can't equal two values at the same time. So this is a great example of when our function is defined, but our limit is not defined. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed lear learning about limits. I know I love teaching it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye.